Yeah, hello everyone. I'm going to talk about statistics and lies. Maybe not so much lies, because li a lie is always something with a bad intention. Let's say sometimes they are just misunderstandings. And also statistics is a very scientific term. Maybe sometimes it's just generally quantitative statements about mapping. I'm going to show some techniques about how to best count things and then show some examples. You will often find yourself wondering what is an OSM? What is it that all these mappers are collecting? What data is available and how much of it? What are these people interested in? Um, you might turn to the wiki and look at what the wiki describes. The wiki has information about all the tags that we use when we map things. Here's an example about a page about natural equals wood, a tag that we use for generally unmaintained woodland. Here's another tag about transformers. Um, this, tag, this, this page is actually quite long, the transformer page, very many pictures and examples and so on. And now assume that you would like to find out which of these is more important to the OpenStreetMap mapping community? Is it trees in the forest or is it transformers? And then you look at the wiki and you evaluate, you evaluate what you see on the wiki. Let's do a quick shootout between uh, power equals transformer and natural equals wood. Which is more important in OpenStreetMap? Which has more people behind it? So there's 2,200 words on the wiki in the power equals transformer description. There's only 400 words for natural equals wood. There's, there's seven additional tags documented that, can, that you can use to further describe exactly what kind of transformer you're looking at. There's only two additional tags documented on the wiki page for natural equals wood. Power transformer has even gone through a voting process and is an approved tag. Whereas natural equals wood has never been voted on, it's a rogue tag, it's not approved, it's just been being used by some people. So it's obvious power equals transformer is much in much more, has much more importance in OpenStreetMap than natural equals wood, right? This is the proof that OpenStreetMap is a bastion of electricity freaks for whom trees are only suitable to make power poles from. Or maybe not. Let's look at another important page in the OpenStreetMap universe, Tag Info. Tag Info tells you how many of which are there in OpenStreetMap and which tags are often used together with other tags. It's daily updated, it's a very, very good resource. Tag Info lets you compare two tags directly. And here's a comparison between power equals transformer and natural equals wood. As you can see here, there are 62,000 transformers mapped in OSM. And there are 4.8 million objects tagged as natural equals wood. Oops, maybe our initial assessment about the importance of transformers wasn't that correct after all. So what exactly did tag info count? Tag info counts how many of something there are not a total area or a total length, which might sometimes also be interesting. Tag info counts OpenStreetMap objects, not real world objects. There might be a large forest that is actually mapped as three dis disjunct areas in OSM, that, that would then be a count of three in tag info. Tag info counts things that have a specific tag and that are currently in OpenStreetMap, so it doesn't look at the history or stuff that has been there before or something. Importantly, tag info does not tell you how many people are actually using the tag. We have seen that there are 4.8 million objects tagged natural equals wood and 68,000 tagged uh, 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 as a transformer, but we don't know how many people actually are there behind this. It might be one crazy guy adding all the transformers and everybody else not being interested in. Let's have a closer look and for this closer look, I need to basically leave the nice uh, display and switch to a shell prompt, where you actually have to enter some commands to find out what you want. 
There's a very cool utility, it's called Osmium. It's a command line utility readily, readily available under current Linux distributions. Um, and this has a tax filter module where I can basically say, okay, give me everything that's called natural equals wood from the planet file and write the result in a file called wood.opl. OPL is a text-only format that um, is used by Osmium or can be written by Osmium and that is easy to process. For example, I can then use the Unix command wc uh, minus l that'll tell me how many lines there are. And you see, as we expected, there are 4.8 million lines in that file because there are 4.8 million objects tagged with natural equals wood. Let's have a look at this file. This is just the first line of it. it looks like this. It's a bit like a CSV file, really. It's a text file. Um, it had different columns separated by spaces. This is the object ID in OSM node number so-and-so, version 4, still visible, edited in this change set. Here's the timestamp. Here's the user ID. Here's the name of the user who has contributed the object. Here are the tags and uh, X and Y. In this case, it's a node. It's relatively rare for a wood, for a forest to be tagged as a node, but it can happen. So this is what the file looks like. Um, I can now, with another Unix command, uh, cut out the seventh column. The seventh column is this username. And I can say, hey, please do a unique sorting on the username. So um, I will see how many different users there are who have actually used this tag. And the result is 35,000. So there are 4.8 million objects contributed by 35,000 users. Or let's, uh, we'll come back to that later. Um, I can also, with a slightly more complicated Unix command, don't worry, these slides will be available for downloading, so you, can, you don't have to jot that down now. Uh, with this slightly different Unix command, I can say, show me the five most prolific people or accounts who have added natural equals wood, and I will find these imports. A little surprise, they are all import things like Kenvac or something, accounts who have like added 50,000 objects. Um, but if I, if I were to uh, look at the list in more detail, I would of course also find real persons who have added that. It is important to remember that the person who has last edited something is not necessarily the person who first created it. So it could be that uh, among those 38,000 people who have last edited a natural equals wood object, some of them might have just corrected the geometry or something, uh, and they, mightn't, they might not be the people who have actually introduced the natural equals wood tag to OSM. Um, but this is also something that we can delve in deeper. Um, we can look at the history file. And we can convert, this command converts the whole history file to an OPL file. This is going to be quite large and take a while. And this OPL file will then contain one line for every historic version of an object, even those who are meanwhile deleted or overwritten by others. Um, and I will find this line that I had before. It will be somewhere in this file, but also older objects. And what I can now do easily, if if, if you are familiar with any type of scripting language, it can be Perl, it can be Python, it can be JavaScript, or you can even do it in any other programming language. Basically, you can process this file, you can look at this tags list here, and you can find out who was the first person to add, an, an, or for every object that now has a natural wood tag, who was the person who added that tag. This is a small Perl program that will do it, but as I said, it can be done in any other programming language as well. And if I run this program on the history OPL file, I will see that there are 30,000 different people who have actually added an natural equals wood tag, as opposed to 35,000 or, or created an object with that tag, as opposed to 35,000 who are last editors of an OSM wood tag, uh, a, a natural wood tag. Small distinction in this case, but could be a major distinction in other cases. Um, I can, of course, also run the program to find out again who are the most prolific people. Not much change here. Um, 
I can also do something, what I did here is basically, if you look at this list and it continues on, uh, and in the end, of course, there will be many people who have just one or two edits uh, to a natural equals wood tag. And I could run a program like this. Uh, I, I, could, I could run basically remove everyone that has just between one and four edits because I would say, okay, those are people who are not really prolific uh, users of natural equals wood. They are just occasional users. Maybe they just copied an object or something, so I won't count them. And that would then give me 14,000 pe 14, people who have used land use equals wood five times or more frequently. Now this is all going to be very slow if you run it in Perl on a worldwide database. You can also do it in C++. Um, this, is, uh, based w this is a program that uses the Osmium library and does just exactly the same thing as the Perl script I showed you before. And this will run like, this will take maybe 20 minutes on the planet file, whereas the other one will take half a day. So if you go in a little bit deeper and are willing to write a little bit of C++ code, then you can do even faster statistics. Now, wrapping up on the transformer versus wood distinction, um, transformer wins on the wiki. It wins when you, when you look at the number of extra tags that are documented on the wiki. However, if you look at the data, you'll find 4.8 million wood versus 62,000 um, objects tagged as transformers. And if you look at people who have actually used the tag five times or more, you will find 40,000 mappers who have tagged a wood object and 1,000 people who have tagged a transformer object. So this is basically proper statistics when you want to dig to the bottom of it. So it's very easy to, if you just have a quick look at the wiki, to misinterpret things. Why am I saying all this? It's about gender. In the last couple of, or even years, a couple of Publications have been made, either scholarly or journalistic, where people reported um, about, in OSM it looks not like this, more like this, um, where people reported that OSM has much more, m many more men than women. And this is obviously true. I mean, if you go to any OpenStreetMap meeting anywhere, there will be uh, 10 men for every one woman or something. And it's obviously bad. I mean, we all know that um, mixed teams, people from all walks of life, people from all genders and all age groups, make a much better team to work on something like the map that we're working on than just a group of men. There's absolutely no discussion about this. I'm very happy to see many women in the audience here and at this conference, and I hope that OpenStreetMap Open will go towards achieving a better gender balance in the future. However, it is not easy to find something in the data where you can actually say, okay, this is obvious. I can see from the data in OpenStreetMap that it has been made by men. Um, and it has been tried in many publications and sometimes the results were really, really bad and people haven't really spent any time looking at the data. For example, the relatively sexist claim has been made that women are more interested in kindergartens and men are more interested in spending their free time in pubs, nightclubs or strip clubs. So um, people have looked at the wiki and have said, hey look, the OSM wiki has all these tags like amenity, pub, bar, nightclub, strip club, brothel, swinger club. And just one thing where you can basically put your children during the day, um, it's obvious this has been made by men, right? Because women wouldn't have done this. Um, in reality, if you look, I've, this is just statistics for Germany. Germany has about 49,000 kindergartens at all, uh, overall. Of these, OpenStreetMap already has 33,000, so that's about two-thirds. If you look at other things in Germany, like pubs, there are 19,000 pubs mapped in Germany, there are 6,000 bars, uh, 1,600 nightclubs, and just a tiny little, like, 1,488 brothels, strip, strip clubs, and so on. So, the total number of all these things uh, is still much lower than the, than the kindergartens in OpenStreetMap. So while it is true that OpenStreetMap does have more tags about 
pubs and kinder pubs and uh, strip, cl strip clubs and so on. Um, it isn't really supported by the data to say, well, you know, this this is obviously something that that men have made and they're not interested in kindergartens or something. Tags aren't everything. I said before that the uh, natural equals wood tag was never approved and that the transformer tag was approved. Um, much has been made in one scholarly article about uh, there, there was a, a proposal a couple years ago about child care and how to better map child care instead of cl classifying everything as amenity equals kindergarten. And this proposal was discussed and was rejected in a vote where 20 or 30 people have participated. And I found this information also in, in, in articles that said it's obvious OpenStreetMap is women unfriendly and it's controlled by men because they have rejected this proposal and women are so interested in childcare and men are not. Um, this proposal has been rejected for formal reasons. There were formal problems with it. And it were, there was only 20 people or so even participating in the discussion. And as you saw before, in, at least in Germany, you have much, many more kindergartens mapped than any number of pubs and restaurants, pubs and nightclubs and so on. So even if this proposal was rejected, it hasn't kept people from actually mapping kindergartens. So don't, reach, don't read much into these, in, into these uh, proposals and whether they're accepted or rejected. Many of the things that we map in OSM have never gone through a proposal process at all. Um, there's another, another journal where someone has actually typed the word brothel in the search box in tag info and then found all these tags like brothel colon sauna club, brothel colon club, brothel colon apartment, brothel escort services and so on like describing all the services that a brothel might offer. Um, and then they type childcare in the box and they found only these very few things and just not very many of them. Um, it's not true to uh, deduct from that that brothels are just much more interesting to open street mappers than anything else. Um, I've compared the, the, so the, the same that you saw before for transformers versus forest. 440 words for brothels, 730 for kindergartens, 16 extra tags documented for brothels, only six for kindergartens. But if you look at the data, there are worldwide 3,700 brothels and 230,000 kindergartens. And if you look at how many people are actually adding brothels, you'll find there's 400 people who have ever added a brothel versus 11,000 who have ever added a kindergarten. And then if you correct, if you say, like I did before, I'll only look at those who've added five or more of that thing, there are 41 people worldwide who have ever, ever added five or more brothels. Also, these detailed tags that you just saw before, like brothel, colon, sauna club, and so on, um, there are only 1,323 of them. 1,182 were added by the same person. And only 15 other people have ever used these tags more than twice. So it's clearly a niche interest, and OpenStreetMap is open to niche interests, but you shouldn't make the mistake of looking at the wiki page or looking at tag info and say, oh, obviously, this is controlled by men who think with their penis, right? So um, be careful and do some research on these things. Lies, I said before, lies, misunderstanding, sometimes it's also the creative omission of truths, and I have two more examples be before I close this talk. One also uh, publicized recently the number of doctors in OpenStreetMap. There are 78,000 doctors in OpenStreetMap and only 958 of them are gynecolog gynecologists or doctors for women's reproductive organs. So, um, yes, this is true. It's true. These are the numbers. But what has been omitted from here is there are 3,940 with a specification of general doctor and these are the next most frequent, like ophthalmology, that's a, a doctor for the eyes, internal, pediatrics, like ch children's doctor, uh, and then various other types together make up 7,342. So the total statistics looks like this. Most of the doctors in OSM do not have any specification about what they are. Um, 
This green block is the general doctors and the second most frequent spec specification is this is a gynecologist in OpenStreetMap, right? So yes, there are a few only, but it is the second most frequent kind of doctor in OpenStreetMap. And I, so this will also be true if I said the second most frequent type of doctor mapped in OpenStreetMap is a gynecologist, that would also be true and it would ring much different than this headline. There's one last example uh, of 221,923 toilets in OpenStreetMap. Only 9,389 of them are for women. In OpenStreetMap, you can have an extra tag. You can say amenity equals toilet, women equals yes, uh, men equals yes, or, or female equals yes, male equals yes, and so on. So, and this is also true. This is this, the exact statistics, but you can imagine what comes next. Um, there are also only 9,500 mapped as being for men. There are 18,000 mapped as unisex. So the total statistics look like this. 190,000 do not have any gender specification. Surely this is an omission and could be improved in the future, but it's not really a sign that these are all like men who are not interested in, in details, right? It's sort of. This little thing here is the overlap between sort of, there are, as I said here, there are 6,600 toilets who are mapped as being for women and for men, which basically means it's an installation that has like two doors, one for men, one for men, women, as opposed to this, which unisex, which means it's one installation with one door that everyone, everyone can use. Um, apologies for people of non-binary gender, I've, for, for making this simple, I've just talked about women and men. OpenStreetMap, of course, has more complicated ways of tagging things, so um, I've, I've just simplified this a little bit. So, my result of my talk, bad signs, don't do it. If you write an article, if you write a scholarly publication about OpenStreetMap, it is definitely true that OpenStreetMap has mostly men as their contributors. It is definitely true that we want to change this and we want to improve and we want to be welcoming to women. Um, but looking at the wiki and saying, oh, there's a lot more here about brothels than there is about kindergartens and that proves that, da, 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 dum, is bad science. Don't do it. And that's my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frederick. Very interesting presentation. Are there questions from the audience? Uh, thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, how do we improve contributions to the wiki so it better reflects what's in the data? Uh, can you say that again, please? How do we better improve what's in the wiki so it reflects what's in the data. So the, the kind of level of interest in the wiki. Yeah, there's, there's always a huge discussion about in how far the wiki actually controls uh, what's, what's in the data. I think that coming back to something that Simon Poole has said in this, his presentation earlier today, it's probably much more what the editors have as presets, uh, what controls what goes into the data. So uh, I think we meanwhile when you map a toilet with an editor preset in all of, the, um, all of the editors that are widely used, you will have presets where you can say, okay, is this for women, is this for men, what kind of toilet is this? And sort of, if you want to change stuff, how it's mapped in OpenStreetMap, changing the editor presets is probably the best way to go and influencing that. Um, Yes, you can add stuff to the wiki, uh, but you, as you see, like the sort of tr there's a huge amount of trans transformer-specific stuff on the wiki, but that doesn't make necessarily make people transformer mappers. Thanks too for the the talk, sir. Um, about the, gyne the gynecologist uh, stat that you've shown, what would be ideal to really understand if there is a, a gender. Uh, twist is to try to find a ratio of gynecologists per doctor population. You see what I mean? Uh, and that will tell us if there is an imbalance between, because saying that uh, gynecologists are the second category, uh, I think is not enough in terms of uh, understanding uh, of the, the reality. You know, maybe there is, for example, 20% 
of gynecologists in the doctor population. And here in your data, there's only like four or five percent represented by what OSM is doing, which would mean that there is a gender uh, imbalance. Uh, what? Yes, you're right. To do this really well, uh, you would have to know the exact numbers of uh, what type of something do exist, as I did with, uh, with the kindergartens where I said, okay, there are so many in Germany and so many of these are mapped. And ideally, you would have to know how many doctors of a certain kind are there in a certain country. Probably very hard to do that worldwide, but you are right um, to, to get a very good idea of sort of if someone maps a gyneco gynecologist, how likely is it that they will actually add that, spe that, that speciality as opposed to if it's a pediatrist or whatever, pediatrician. Right. Sorry. I just wanted to add on to that. Um, I think one thing that people don't understand is that OpenStreetMap is work in progress. And for example, in this case, detailed speciality mapping for doctors is something new. We haven't been doing that for so long. And that's why there's this gigantic number of doctors that don't have details mapped. And that, you can see that happening all over the place. And so that's just stepwise refinement, the way we do it in OpenStreetMap. And uh, so people shouldn't assume that things are steady state. Hi. Thanks, Frederick, for the figures. Um, uh, I was about to. Uh, so, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I was about to make the same uh, kind uh, of remarks uh, about you have the real number for kindergarten in Germany. Maybe uh, you could uh, give the real number of pubs in Germany so that we know in relative, uh, because it's hard to refute that uh, um, pubs are not uh, mapped as well as kindergarten because there is less pub. And so it, it's hard to follow the logic uh, until the end if you are talking relative and not abs absolute or not relative. And can yeah. I? That's it's true. I was a bit uh, I was a bit fuzzy on that bit, and I did actually try to find out the number of pubs in Germany, and the only official statistics I could find were combined with restaurants. Uh, and when I when I ran the numbers on OpenStreetMap on combined with restaurants, uh, I I would get such huge numbers that the result would be basically uninteresting, and I didn't find a particular number, official number for the number of pubs. But you're right, you, you, ideally what you would want to do is for each category of POI, how many are there in, in reality and how many percent of that does OpenStreetMap already have? Yeah. Fair. So I was going to ask the same question and I found a number that's there's 33,000 which would suggest that they're 100 percent covered. You found a number that says there's 33,000 pubs in it Germany? It was the first result on Google. It was Cure. Uh, Forgive okay. me. <laughs> so I struggle to believe that they should be 100% mapped, but maybe they are. Uh, Cure. <laughs> It's quite possible that German men who have mapped all these pubs only turn to kindergartens afterwards. We are running out of time, so I'm sorry, but I have to close this first talk here. Thank you again, Frederick, and of course, you can continue the discussion. After.